As we are not using this console window anymore, we can just clear the screen and log out. So now that we have SSH access, we can just take a look at our configuration. First, we may want to look at the FDesk configuration to see how it looks like. What we want to see is that we want to see our main OS installed here, and we don't want to see SDB, which is our second hard disk that should not be used for anything at all. In this case, we will also use parted, which we will just install. And then we will say parted-l. Here we can see that SDA is having these positions right here, and SDB does not have any partitions. That's how it should look like. Keep in mind that you can run Kraken with like four disks and then having four different partitions, like four different disks or even four partitions, but you shouldn't have any file systems at all. So now that we have this, we can move on to getting the rainbow tables. Now keep in mind that this will take around four to five days, maybe longer. This depends on how fast your internet speed is. But if you have 200 to 500 megabits per second, it will take four to five days. An easy to use interface is called Deluge. So we will just install Deluge and Deluge Web. Click yes. And as you can see, it is going super, super fast because we are accessing a local mirror. So we almost have zero latency. Now that the installation has finished, we may also need to install Deluged, which is the daemon. Now we should be ready to run our web interface. In order to do that, we will run Deluge Web, but first we will install Screen as well. Just click Enter twice, Deluge Web, and let's look at the help options. You want to use SSL, and we want to be quiet. That should be pretty much it. We can also specify another port, like port 6000, and hit Enter. Let's see if it works. So in my case, I had to use 6561 because Firefox would not connect to this port. So now I've connected and I'll just click Advanced, Add Exception and Confirm. Here we will have to log in with Deluge and then we will change the password to something else. Click Apply and OK. Now we will need to test that the connection manager is working. So we'll just click Start Daemon and wait a few moments. Sometimes it can help by just refreshing the page and then clicking Connection Manager or it will show automatically. So now we can see that it's online and we will just click Connect. Now we are ready to use our torrents. We can either add them manually or we can add them all at once. But first we need to get the torrent files. So now that we have a working copy of Deluge, we will need to get the A5 tables. If you go to the official website, you may think that these links work, but they don't. So you can try and search for example for A51 table torrents. If you do that, the first link right here should provide the table torrents file that we need. So you can see it here and we can just download it by clicking this button. Once the file has been downloaded, we can upload it through FileZilla, for example. So now that we have the torrent file zip, we'll need to upload it to our web server. We can do that by finding out our IP address from ifconfig and then we can use FileZilla with sftp and then this option and then copy paste the IP address. 
type in our credentials. Then we will just upload as follows. Now that the file is uploaded, we can extract it and then add the torrents. So we'll just close this window, clear the screen, and see if the file is there. So we'll just unzip it. And then we will just enable colors because it looks better. Just run bash again if we don't want to log in. And then we will check that the torrents are there. So now that we have a list of torrents, we cannot we can start to install them. So we will go into the luge again, and then we will note the path where these torrents are stored. So that's the path, and we will just create a new directory called A5 in the root, because that's where we will download the A5 tables to. So we will open this here. And in the preferences, we will change the download to and then change it to A5 and click OK first, and then there. Next, we will add all the torrents. Let's see. Also add torrents from. And we will do it here and click Apply and OK. And now we have all the torrents files. Now the thing is, with the default settings, it's going to take ages to download. So what we can do is that we can modify the settings a bit because we have quite a powerful server. So we will click Downloads or click the Preferences. And we will just go through the settings to see if there's anything we can optimize. So this looks fine. Random, yes. That's fine. Encryption, that's fine. Bandwidth here, we will just say 1000. Maximum upload slots, let's just say 16, so we are a good seeder. Maximum upload speed, 16,000. You don't want, if we upload all the time with like 500 megabits, our provider might shut down or restrict our connection, so we don't want to upload with too much, but 16 uh, megabytes per second, or I'm not sure if it's megabit, but I think it's megabyte. So 16 megabyte per second is around 100 megabit, because you just times eight. And that should be more than generous. Maximum download speed, one half open, let's say 200. And connection attempts, that's fine. Max, uh, that's per torrent, so just take apply. And let's see, maximum connections, maximum upload slots, that's per torrent. Download speed, let's set the maximum download speed per torrent to 4096. That way one torrent won't take up all of the available speed in case other torrents are being served very or very fast. So now that we have this configured, we'll just move on. See interface, that's fine. Other, nope. Daemon, nope. Q, this is important. We want to enable at least 40. Take apply. Social downloading, 40. Social seeding, 16. Share ratio, we want to maximum at 3. And that's because we don't want to use a huge amount of bandwidth because keep in mind, we're downloading 1600 gigabytes or 1.6 terabytes. So if we're sharing three times that, that's uh, 4.8 4 terabyte or almost five terabytes, I think. So we want to make sure that we don't over abuse our traffic and bandwidth so we will just do this here, this here, and we'll say proxy 
Here you can define a proxy, but keep in mind that if you're using a proxy for for just these tables, then it will be a lot slower. I initially tried that and I was restricted to like 10 megabits per second. So that's that's a big issue when you can download with like 14 megabytes per second or 100 megabit because it's going to take a lot longer. So you can check cache, that's fine. Plugins, we don't need the plugins really. We could save the notifications, but we don't really need to. As you can see, this file here will take around three to four hours, while the longest file will take two to three days. That's the optimal condition, and keep in mind that it goes up and down quite a bit. So you can't be 100% certain, because now it's like three days and four hours. In my case, it took around four days to download all of these files. So it will take a while, even with a fast server that has 500 megabits per second. It will take some time, because not everybody is seeding with that much speed.